Hey guys, I'm back and we're ready to go. We just did the veins and some spattering just to tie them back underneath the skin. But I'm starting to think maybe he's a little pale for, for my taste. We'll warm him up a bit just to bring him back into the living, okay? So what I did was I reduced down some of the surgery sienna with some of our 4011 reducer. I did go about uh, between five and 10% on that. So we get a, a little test, test off model. Let's go over here and we're just gonna kinda do an overwash, kind of just a, a very, we'll start very light. You don't wanna be uh, blasting this everywhere. So what we're gonna do, just start warming up some of the skin. Maybe leave some of these knobs, knobby heads, a little less so they're a little high, highlighted already. And we'll kind of come around here. And we still, we're still retaining a lot of that good stuff we put in already. We come around to the back, we'll, we'll leave this kind of bulgy a little lighter. This little cranial bulge. We'll just kind of halo it and then come down here. This is just kind of a knockdown for the whole paint job. Ever so light. You see how he's warming up. And we'll leave some of these high points alone. Well, we'll try to leave them alone a little bit. Come in there, get under here, always under the chin. <clears throat> we got a little heavy here, but we can fix that. Or not, I don't really mind it. Taking them into that real kind of icky skin tone. All right, we'll get in here a little bit. You can see how layering really is effective, and it, it just brings it brings it home. So we're we're getting near where we can start dropping in the eyes and some cool stuff. See, that gives us a slight yellow tone too to the ears that uh, your ears uh, often have. I don't know if that has anything to do with the wax. <laughs> All right, I'll come back. Leave the highlight here. Are we out of paint? Yep, we're out of paint, so we'll throw a little bit more 4011 in here. Couple drops of this. Surgery Sienna again. Maybe one, two. All right, seal that. Kind of in, in, in cut mix. We just want to wash. We're almost done. So we're just gonna knock this down. Oops, put our lid on so we don't spill it on our shoes. Since this is a little warmer here, we'll, put, we'll equal it up over here. So we kind of got, got them going into the world. All right. So that's that pass. <clears throat> I think without even really rinsing out the cup, because it wasn't a lot of paint in there, we're gonna shift right into some uh, <clears throat> blunt trauma umber straight away out of the bottle. And there she blows. All right, what we're gonna do with this, and I guess I do have a little bit over here, but we'll, we'll live with it for now. Nah, no we won't. Let me just do a little bit of touch up. Quick touch up, a little more of this, but we'll move right into the blunt trauma umber. One drop because we just need the faintest mix, the faintest uh, little amount, little dash will do you. Just going to bring this a little deeper to match the other side. Yeah, you know, nobody's head symmetrical that, that much. So we'll put a little more there, a little here, a little there. Yeah, that's neat. That's really cool. And that's the transparent quality of these paints. It really lends itself to these airbrush washes. All right. Give this a quick wipe. Not really, because they're in the same ballpark color-wise. Seal up the Sienna. Blunt Trauma Umber. Give this just a quick little shake shake. Just a little dab, because we're just going to do some freckling, some, some spotting. There's your, your, your brown. We're not gonna go dark, dark. Well, maybe we will, let's see. All right, I wanna put one right here. So what we'll do is uh, start slow and close in. 
And we got a nice little highlight right there. A little, little hard shell peppercorn, I like to call them, all right? But I like doing them in threes. So we'll do another tiny one over here. And then we'll do, uh, let's do one more over here. So there's that. See how that pushes that back? We'll put a couple here. But here we're just gonna go a little lighter and just kind of infer some spottage. Just kind of random. Different densities by going in and out and how much we put. All right. Here, let's, we can just dust this a little bit and blend some of that in. Let's, let's get this guy dark again. I lined him up, but I like him dark, I think. Yeah, I just gotta get the size. He's a little raised up, so then we'll get that guy. Bring that one that was in his ear back. Give him some little livery spots coming. Now, he'd probably carry some of those all the way to the back of his head. I envision him with a real, just sparse amounts of long, kind of white and gray hair, maybe. Kind of like a, you know, funeral, funeral director or what have you. It uh, looks like this got a little orange. So we can just come back with just the slightest mist of uh, maybe the dermatitis tan. You know, you're gonna have some areas you gotta always go back and just knock back, knock back or knock in. It's kind of the nature of um, painting. And I think it just ultimately adds up and that's what makes the magic happen. There's all these little accidents and then the corrections, and then that's really part of the paint job, you know. Let's put a couple hard ones up here. Let's see that. Put a hard, dark one there. See, same color, but <clears throat> you can get a good range of uh, color value with the one shade. All right, so let me, uh, Take a moment, wash this out. I'll go to Dermatitis Tan, and I'll show you how to, we'll clean that up just a touch, and then uh, we'll be on this, maybe the eyes, okay? I'll see you in a minute. Okay, guys, well, uh, while we were gone, I couldn't help myself, so I just lightened up this with a little Dermatitis Tan. No big deal, just missed it a little bit, equaled them up, and uh, I wanna do some eyes and teeth and start getting somewhere with this, okay? So let's do that. What I like to do is uh, we're gonna do some half uh, circles here to be as to represent his iris and usually the iris I believe is about one-third of the width of the eye opening um, so we'll go with that what I like to do is do a base of a dark tone in this case uh, let's do some let's do some decay all right well, you know what uh, yeah let's go with decay it's a nice dark color or it can be. All right. We're just going to go with that straight into the cup. Now, it's going to have to. Now I'm going to kind of go in slow and kind of inch my way around there. Don't try to just blast in in one pass. You're just going to kind of draw it in there and then you can fill it in or not. This is just for a dark edge around that. We'll lighten up the iris, but what we're going to do is come in here. What I like to do is find center, approximate center, and just start creeping around like this. Start inching the paint job around. Sometimes you might find the paintbrush is easier to at least rough it in. Oops, don't freak out, I just went a little off. No big deal. There's no big deals with monsters. Or any painting, really. There's always a way to fix stuff. Troubleshooting's the name of the game. Start going in, something like that. It's not perfectly round, so we'll come down a little bit. And this is kind of a back and forth. See, I just went out of the circle. Oh, well. Because we'll come back in and cut that. I'm just trying to uh, rough these in. A 
So we're starting to get there. If you if you didn't if I didn't uh, screw up there, oops, I just screwed up again. What do you know? All right. You don't have to take it this dark. I'm just trying to get somewhere with a shape, fix it, and then I'll come back with the that it was a dermatitis tan, I believe. And then we're gonna get a shadow where, it kind, of, where it kind of a, a probably like a bluish halo where it, uh, the light goes back over the, uh, the decay. But I'll be right back and I'll show you how to clean that up. Let me just change this paint and uh, I'll be there. All right, see you soon. Okay, so I've taken some of the dermatitis tan like we, I said, and I just kind of made these a little sharper around, you know kind of quickly for the video just so you can see so you guys can move on and see what we do so I got a little bit of the uh, <coughs> expired blue just straight into straight away into the cup and I'm just gonna test on off model and tighten up my spray pattern a little bit all right and we'll just kind of feather in some of this start in the center so you got somewhere to go this table is moving a little bit. Yeah, I just take a little bit of time and patience because you got to go back and forth and you're probably going to overspray your uh, eyelids. You have to clean those up lastly. So we'll just rough, rough them in like this. Drop in something like that. All right, so we got a little bright blue going on. And what I want to do is gray them down. So what I will do when I come back in two seconds, uh, we're gonna mix some of your transparent base, uh, wherever it went, we'll find it, here it is. The colorist transparent base that all these bloodlines come from were built around. We're gonna add maybe a drop or two of uh, some old bone white and we're gonna fog over that and just kind of gray and deaden them down, like, you know, kind of like Walking Dead zombies, you know, where they're all kind of milky and cataract. We're gonna drop some of that in, okay? I'll be right back. Let me just wash this out and we'll get going. Hey, I lied. Okay, I'm back because uh, I'm gonna, although we are gonna do this filmy uh, cataract clear translucent base over these, I forgot we need to put the pupil in there too. So it's also got that milky haze over it. So I'm, I'm gonna go with the decay. I think it's dark, plenty dark enough to uh, represent <clears throat> the dark pupil underneath this uh, milky coat we're gonna put in. So test off model, we got, we got darn near black. So we're gonna tighten this up come in and again try to just fog this in a little bit dance it in there ever so slightly now we got a little room to play since since we are going to go over them see so we come in there like that lift this back a little bit all right come back with the other side i'm just going to turn this so i can make sure i get them close could do one all white like he has a blind eye so we're not going to do that here today. There's plenty of plenty of ideas. All right, and I'm sure if you guys spend a little more time than I am, you can make some beautiful eyes. Okay, so we got those in. Now I'll be right back with that transparent milk tone, and we'll haze them all down, all creepy like. All right, see you in a second. All right, I'm back. Uh, just cleaned out the uh, decay from the pupils. Now we're gonna make that milky color. We're gonna take some of the transparent base. Although it looks white, it's, trust me, it'll dry clear. So we get some of that. Get a fair amount. Now this is a little bit <clears throat> guesswork because it's white and the old bone white we're putting in. So we're just gonna inch along and we might have to come back and add a drop more, add a drop more. It's just kind of experimental stage. You don't need a lot of this. But I'm, I'm trusting uh, one drop of this will go a little far. So we're just gonna drop this. Whoops, we got a couple in there. 
we're going to hope that worked. And just for protection, we're going to go with a little bit more transparent base. Let me get this mixed up. Sometimes to thoroughly mix, you can use sticks and mixers and all that, but you can also just box paint back and forth. Might not be the rule of thumb with pros, but I'm a monster maker. All right. So we got that. We're going to add a little bit more transparent base. You see, you can already see what we're getting. So we want to go a little more transparent than that, or translucent is what we're going to end up with. A little more clear than a milk carton. About sort of like this, you know, where you can still see shadow behind it. Okay, so that's what we're after. We're going to add a little more transparent base. Give that a whirl. Give that a whirl. And we'll pour it back in here, give it a whirl. That's getting still pretty, pretty opaque. I, w I overdid it with some of the uh, old bone. So maybe rather than keep going and going and going and experimenting, we're going to start here with a fresh cup of clear, transparent base, rather. And we'll just back mix it a little bit. <laughs> Since that's already been reduced with some transparent base, we'll go that way and see we're already a bunch of... Uh, time ahead. It's much, much more see-through, and I think that's going to about do it. Maybe on camera it seems uh, negligible, but you can see it in person. You'll see. You just, because we can always white it down more. All right, so we're going to go like this. Ah, you know what? I'm nervous, so we'll put a little more in. <laughs> All right, here we go. Just going to add that to the color cup. You don't need a lot. If we need more, we'll get more. Move all these over here or you might wear it. And especially you don't want to spill your paint because it might get on your, on your piece. And if you're on a deadline, that could hurt you. <clears throat> all right, seal your bottles as well. Okay, we got a little of this. Now this is gonna be hard to try out on a wet, I mean on a white paper towel. Sometimes I'll just spray it on there. We got, see, you can see where we're at now with that. So I might want to go back to a little of that <clears throat> but I'd rather start slow. So we're going to come in here, knock the spray down. I got a little dribble down here, some water, okay. <clears throat> and I'm just going to turn this for a second. I'm just going to fog over the entire eye because the, the clear over the white, you won't really notice. And we're going to put a little on there, let it just sit there. Use a little air to dry it. And you're probably thinking, I don't see a difference, but it's there. But what you got to do is kind of creep in. You don't want to put too much heavy paint and have it just dripping down everywhere, right? So put a little air back on there. And maybe I did clear it up too far. So, but I, like I said, I'd rather start out a little careful, okay? They are subdued a little bit, but we'll come back. What I'm going to do is go back to one of our previous batches, just add a touch more back in there. That'll basically add some more white to our mix. But we want to make sure this is dry. And we can come back in and cut in the uh, dermatitis tan around the outside if we need to. But we figure we're going to put some uh, bloody, you know, capillaries and stuff in the eye. I say you don't want to puddle it up because you just make a mess. Also, you can use this this kind of overlay effect on teeth to give them that translucent tooth effect. You know. This is just air I'm putting on people. All right. And you do that just to hold your trigger forward, keeping the needle closed. Then you're pressing down air. So you're just getting air, not paint. You just make sure you don't pull back or you get a blast of that stuff, all right? So we'll just dry this up a little bit more, a little bit more. I like to keep it moving so I'm not ever just blasting in one section. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. We're going to drop in some of the new whiter clear, as it were. 
Just dancing a little bit here. On three runs, and then we'll go over here. A little more air. You see, you can see it's getting knocked down a little bit, right? You can use this, this wash technique over a lot of areas, even over some veinage. Just bury it under this little milky kind of, you know, uh, layer. And see, it'll just, it's just a wash that uh, kind of buries it under this little membrane almost. Looks good all over, all over. You can do it with the lips and make that kind of like, a, like I said, another membrane almost over this stuff. Yeah, that's fun stuff. All right. All right. A little more air on these eyes. Probably got a jar of hooch somewhere in the graveyard he's been drinking. All right, now I think I'll put some more on. All right, sorry, I'll just turn them here so I don't flood the thing. You can really keep track of how much you're putting on on the dark. So that one, I'm getting a little spider webbing because I've dumped a little too much on, but that's not gonna be a big deal. Because we can come in and doctor that in with some capillary business. All right, and this one I really, over blew it because I was too close, but you don't want to be too far back because you'll overspray. So there we go. Oops, I got too close with the air, so we're gonna have to dry that up and correct it. Normally you take a little more time than I am. Make sure this each layer is dry. See, it keeps moving around because I'm rushing this. Oh boy, it's really uh, tacking that. Well, I'll come back and I'll show you uh, where these are going and I'll talk to you in a minute. Hey guys. All right, well, as you know, I uh, blasted that in, on in uh, the transparent and I kind of went a little haywire. So to prevent further bleeding, what I remembered we have is a 40-40 bleed checker. It keeps that bleeding once that's dry. Once I put a coating on, once it's dry, it'll, it'll, it'll uh, relieve us of that problem, all right? So here, I got some loaded in the airbrush. It's, this is a little cup of it. And we're just gonna dust some on. A couple passes of this. Great material. It's just a couple passes. Let that tack up and dry. Then we should, I'm gonna do the teeth. I should have said that. I'm doing the teeth too, knowing that we're gonna come in and do something similar to the eye but with the, you know, grungy colors, it muck up his teeth. So we'll put a little down here, around the whole mouth area. Revisit the eyes a little bit, and then we'll let that dry up thoroughly, and then we'll be back. Maybe I'll come in, dance in a few little broken capillaries, uh, busted uh, capillary in there. We'll just make that work, a little happy accident and we'll gum up his teeth and we're, we're close, all right? All right, I'll see you in a minute. All right, I'm back and uh, you know, we had a little bleeding and stuff. We put the 40-40 bleed checker on. We let it dry a little bit, uh, about an hour, hour and a half maybe. Let it really dry up. So now I'm gonna come in with a brush and dance in a little red and stuff. Just tighten these up. And then we'll go right to the teeth. I have a color mixed up and I'll tell you about that in a sec. All right, I'm just gonna drop out a little surgery sienna and a little blood red. Uh-oh, I think I forgot to take the little dually duck thing out in there. Oh. Yeah, these keep paint from going everywhere. Shit. All right. Here we go. Little blood red. Can't ever hurt. All right, just gonna mix that down. Maybe we'll drop a little bit of blunt trauma umber on here too, in case it gets a little too bright. And then we're just gonna kind of wet palette mixes. Oh yeah, that looks real good right there. All right, we're just gonna kind of 
<laughs> Maybe a little bit of this 4013. Just a little splash on the palette. Loosen it up. We don't want too much on there. I already got my little color right here mix. Just gonna dance in a little bit of color in here. Oh, broken capillary. I'm gonna lay in maybe some in this lid. Couple in here, to jacked up by. Then we'll take another brush and we'll just kind of marbleize it a little bit. Do, do, do. All right. And get that down in there. All right, it's got one jacked up by, but we'll put that red line down here again. Just to carve in these eyes a little bit. All right, like that. Wash your brush off so it don't dry up on there. A little water will do. All right. Now we're gonna go right to the teeth. What I did was I mixed a little uh, surgery sienna with a little blunt trauma umber. Made kind of this, oh, I added a little bit of the uh, injury ochre too. And what I got was a kind of a grimy color, all right? We're just gonna drop this in a little bit right here. Gum up his teeth a little bit. Oops, got on his lip, wipe that off rapidly. All right. Come back maybe with the brush and kind of muck that guy up, muck this one up a little bit. Yeah, so down a little bit. Just kind of grime him up. You know what, I kind of like this color. I might yellow up his eyes too a little bit. Let's just, just the faintest amount in there. Just in the corners, we'll leave this a little brighter and just hit the corners a little. Yellow up that edge. Yeah, that looks cool. And there you have it, really a basic uh, paint job on a cool little head. But you see, we got all kinds of interesting things going on all over the thing, starting with the spatter. Well, starting with the adhesion promoter. Then we went in <coughs> and uh, did our spatters, spatter color, colors with the brush. When that dried, we uh, hit it with the uh, transparent base just to give, lock it down. Then we came back, did a little purple model. Then we uh, started in with some details, some purples, some browns. Uh, our freckles, then we did some of the uh, cool tone out of the lifeline. We did a lip tone. And, uh, you know, we could really keep going for, for miles, but uh, I think you have a basic, pretty darn good paint job right here. And, uh, you know, and there you go. And uh, I'm sure you'll have fun coming up with your own little details that uh, are fun and exciting. You know, maybe a little hair, beep, off these uh, moles. And, uh, and there you go, Tim Gore at Createx Colors. And there's a little, little uh, how-to with the bloodline and the adhesion promoter. All right, see ya. Bye.